innovations in AI and machine learning follow each other at rapid pace, as almost every new product or every new service innovation contains these technologies. It is crucial to stay up to date. Gabriel Ramirez, he is the senior developer advocate at Amazon Web Services. He's here to talk us through all the latest developments in machine learning, in AI, and in cloud. Welcome, Gabriel. Oh, thank you very much, Ronald. So, AWS is innovating in the cloud services for the, the last 15 years. So, what important new developments do you see, and what can we expect the coming months? Yeah, so at Grainbent, uh, in December, we uh, announce uh, innovations around some different areas. The first one will be computation. Apart from the fancy things on serverless and containers, we are also innovating on instances, like for example, getting uh, 400 gigabits per second of network connectivity or up to 24 terabytes of RAM memory, or being able to start a macOS instance directly on AWS, of course, we've also seen a lot of innovation on storage because, you know, if you think about that, in just uh, one hour these days, we are generating more data that we used to generate uh, in one year, 20 years ago. So there is a lot of innovation to do on storage. We've been uh, working on block storage, for example. We released GP3 uh, block storage that gives you uh, more throughput at a lower price than, you know, the GP2. Uh, when it comes to data stores, to databases, we offer many different databases other than relational. For example, Amazon Time Stream to work with time series data, like data coming from Internet of Things. If you want to use a relational database now with Amazon Aurora, you can use the serverless version to ver uh, that allows you to uh, scale up and down and react in real time in seconds to changes in capacity. Of course, we've been innovating on machine learning, but I believe we are going to be speaking a bit more about that in one second. We've been innovating on hybrid cloud, how we operate outside the AWS data centers, and we've been innovating on creating a specific applications for different verticals. So more and more products and services contain machine learning and AI applications. And this means as well that developers need to be able to create these faster, and in a more scalable way. So what new type of tools make it much easier for machine learning and data science practitioners to create machine learning models faster? Yeah, uh, if, if you take a look at how it was to do machine learning just six, seven years ago, it was completely different as it is today. Uh, you will have a limited choice of tools. Uh, most data scientists or machine learning engineers will work in command line tools or interactive consoles or maybe Jupyter Notebook, then you will probably have to rewrite the code to move to production. It was not the best way to work. So on AWS, we've been already offering uh, Amazon SageMaker for a number of years, and we've been improving the tools you can use. So a part, of course, of uh, improving on the frameworks we support and how efficient they are, we've been offering things like the SageMaker Studio that gives you an ID feeling, so everything is integrated and it's easier to work with that. But just a few months ago, we announced, for example, the SageMaker Data Wrangler. So now you can explore and manipulate your data in a visual environment, and then you can automate that to uh, execute as many times as you want. We have also created the SageMaker Feature Store that allows you to share your features with other teams, or it allows you to reuse your features across multiple models. We've also had a SageMaker Clarify that allows you to detect bias on your models and allows you to fix your bias if it detects you know, that the bias is there. Uh, we improve the SageMaker debugger. So now, if your model is not working fine, if it's not performing the way you want, you can have more insights on what can be going on inside the model, and also in terms of which part of the model are taking hits on the performance when training, for example. Uh, a big thing when you were doing machine learning is that you didn't have a good way of doing things like continuous integration. But now with SageMaker pipelines, you can actually do a continuous integration and continuous deployment and automate end-to-end -end the whole life cycle of working with machine learning models. So if you are a machine learning practitioner, 
Now you have the power of the same type of tools that you will expect if you are developing in any other modern environment, infrastructure as code, being able to work with data in a way, sharing data with other teams. If you are not uh, a specialist on machine learning, if you only want to use machine learning at a higher level, you have services like uh, Amazon Precognition, like Amazon Forecast, like uh, Amazon Poly that allow you to use machine learning without having to actually learn about machine learning. So now, Using machine learning is easier than ever for a lot of developers. Do you see these developments in, in all industries at the same pace or are there some industries that excel? Well, that's very interesting because for a while we've been offering uh, applications and services that were horizontal for all the companies. Like take, for example, Amazon Connect, that is a call center you can use in any company. Uh, and we were enabling some machine learning on Amazon Connect to do interesting things like analytics on top of, you know, real time analytics on top of the customers that were calling, but that was for all the horizontals. And we realized that we could actually reinvent some industries. If you take a look at the manufacturing sector, for example, we've been developing lately a lot of machine learning services for that particular sector. We developed Monitron that allows you to do uh, predictive maintenance in older machines that are not prepared to work with, uh, connected with the cloud. For more modern machines, we also have now services like Amazon, AWS, sorry, look out for equipment that allows you to do, again, predictive maintenance on more modern machines. If you want to add uh, machine learning vision and bring that to the factory floor, you have AWS Panorama. So we are doing a lot of innovations on uh, for the industry of machine learning. But it's not only for the uh, industry vertical. You take a look at healthcare. We announced recently uh, Amazon Health Lake that allows you to create a data lake on AWS, applying automatically machine learning on medical data. We already had in the past uh, the Amazon Recognition and Comprehend Medical that are specialized on working with medical data. And very recently, we also announced Amazon Finest Spaces to help financial institutions work with data, specifically in ways to meet with the compliance they need, with the type of data they use. So there are a number of verticals that we are helping reinvent, and we are looking at more verticals where we can help them be more efficient. Yeah, and as we discussed in the beginning already, uh, AWS innovates already for 15 years in the cloud. But what is next? What is beyond the cloud? Can you share your experience and what we can see the coming weeks? So, so uh, as you know, we have already uh, 25 different infrastructure regions, but we see customers sometimes they want to have the uh, APIs of the cloud, the SDK of the cloud on premises because they have their uh, own data centers. They are working in a hybrid way. For that, we offer uh, AWS Outpost that allows you, it's a, it's a physical hardware, we send to your data center and you operate in exactly the same way you will use with AWS. So you can have part of your operations in the cloud, part of your operations on your data center, but you're using the same APIs. In the same manner, we have also uh, announced EKS and ECS Anywhere, our container solutions that you can deploy or anywhere you want using the same uh, control plane that you're using on AWS. We also have now the local zones that are available in some parts in the world. They are ultra low latency zones for parts that are not that close to a region where you want to have that extra performance. And we are working now with some 5G operators to bring part of the cloud directly to uh, the premises of the telco operator. So what we are seeing is that while most of the servers eventually will be running on cloud, we see more and more parts, including also, of course, Internet of Things that are going to be decentralized to a specific parts of the ecosystems. And we are very excited to see how that is evolving. Thank you, Gabriel, for, for sharing the latest developments. And we can't wait till June 9 and June 10 to join AWS Summit in EMEA. And for the audience, thank you for watching. And we look forward to seeing you next time.